Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Haley from Bargain Bug. Today I am going to be filming a student teacher tag. So what I did was I looked up teacher tag and I found, um, I'm reading the questions off for my notebook by the way. It's Kafoopal, I think it is. K-A-F-O-O-P-L-E, Kafoopal Land. I'll have it linked down in the description and then I will have all the questions linked down below or like written in the description box. Um, also, sorry if my face is red. <laughs> it is, I think, about 95 degrees here today. So I'll be drinking water in between and let's just get through this together. <laughs> so I'm going to read you the questions that are from the teacher tag and then show you how I'm going to modify them for a student teacher. So number one is how long have you been teaching? What grades have you taught and background? So obviously as a student teacher, I've not taught yet but I've worked in an educational setting for three years. Um, I've actually worked at the same school that I'm student teaching at, which is really cool. Um, I worked there briefly um, the last term of my freshman year as a, as a Title IX tutor, helping out um, kids who are English language learners. And then for the last two years, it was the third term of my sophomore year, and then all three terms of my junior year, I worked at the after school program. So, um, and then now I'm gonna be a student teacher at that same school. Um, and the after school program was first grade through fifth last year and then um, kindergarten through fifth, fifth this current year. So I've taught, taught all of those grades. Um, so question two is what grade do you teach? So um, I'm gonna be saying that I am gonna be in third grade. That is my student teaching placement. I was in, I am in a third grade classroom. So that is super exciting. Number three is where do you teach state and city? So again, this is gonna be where my student teaching placement is, um, but I'm not super comfortable with sharing that just cause the internet is a little weird. Um, but I do live in the state of Oregon and it is kind of in the Northwestern part of the state. So I live, I am living and teaching in Oregon. Um, what's your school's mascot? So. <laughs> Even though I've worked there for three years, I've had a, I actually had to Google this right before, um, and they are the Pioneers, which I think is a, kind of an interesting mascot, but I don't know. Um, how many students are in your class is question number five. So there are, I believe it was 17 or 18, but I met with my mentor teacher at the very end of school, and so the way that it kind of worked, at least at my college, is that they placed us, and so we got to pick our top three districts in the area, and then you could say if you wanted a specific school or a specific teacher, even down to that if you wanted, um, and I was actually placed. I, I picked the district, I was placed at a school, and then some things were actually shifted around, and then I got placed at the school that I wanted to be at, which is really exciting and I got placed in the third grade classroom that I was at. So it was like the second to last day of school, I think it was, that I was able to meet with her, which was really nice because some people don't get that, which like at least um, the way that it's worked previously and the way that it works working now for other students, um, college students that is, is that they don't get placed until summertime or they don't get placed until like the end of August. So you basically just like go back to, you, you just like, walk into student teaching having no idea what's happening. So um, I met with her and they got um, their class list and then they actually got to do a little like meet and greet with their teacher. And so the way that the school did it um, was that they they kind of try to take kids from each class. So I'm teaching student teaching in third grade. So they took like a few kids from each um, second grade class that there was at that school and like kind of did that and so there was like a meet and greet and all the kids got to go and have like a day in their third grade classroom which was really cute sounding anyways I wasn't there like I said um but then also things can change over the summer kids can move either into the school or out of the school um but something that is so exciting is that it is 17 or 18 like it is a smaller class size just because of how many teachers there are in third grade and the students and just the area the school that I was previously placed at and then it switched they were gonna have like 33 um but yeah so 32 versus 18 that's pretty cool which also brings you into the next question 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 number six is what is your ideal class size so obviously Sorry if I feel like I'm talking too fast. Like I said, I'm really hot. So um, 
my deal class size again so I since I have not taught um, I don't know this for sure but I feel like the less the better right like the the less students you have the more one-on-one -on -one time you can have or um, small group time sort of thing um, I really don't know <laughs> um, I, like I said, I think that 17 or 18 cents is more manageable than 32. Um, so I guess that's my my guess. Um, then this one threw me for a loop, but I guess I can kind of understand. Um, number seven, what is your favorite drink from Starbucks? So um, my favorite drink from Starbucks, which I've recently, kind of recently found, I think within the last year or so, um, and I've actually <laughs> shown in a couple of different um, videos, is a cinnamon dulce latte from Starbucks. And so basically it's just espresso, milk, and cinnamon dulce syrup. And then I don't like whipped cream on it, partially just because of that dome lid and then partially just because it adds more like calories to it and not a lot of flavor in my opinion. Um, and then they have cinnamon dulce sprinkles. Um, so that's my favorite drink, like hands down, if I'm gonna go and if like, I've got like the money if I'm feeling like rich, um, if I'm feeling like spending like five dollars or whatever on a cup of coffee. But my um, go-to like hack for Starbucks um, is that I order an iced coffee and I sub the classic syrup for the cinnamon dulce syrup. And so also I like more milk in mine. So normally what I do, which is kind of a complicated order, um, is I get a so I'll get a grant I'll get in a venti cup. I'll get a grande iced coffee, sub the syrup for cinnamon dulce syrup, extra, extra, extra milk. Um, and so basically it fills up the drink, like it fills up a venti cup, but you only have the grande sized coffee, if that makes sense. Um, so that's my favorite. And then I did mention that I do live in Oregon. I like Dutch Bros. Dutch Bros is a local coffee place to um, Oregon is where they were started and then Washington has a few California and then they're expanding into other states um, But I prefer a iced annihilator and I actually prefer to get more coffee in an annihilator So like I I get a quad shot. I get a medium light iced quad shot annihilator basically. It's my order um, again kind of complicated because I drink coffee really slow and they really 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 just add a ton of milk if you asked for light ice so instead of adding instead for asking less ice um I get less ice but more coffee um but that one has been hurting my stomach lately so anyways getting completely off track with coffee um number eight what is your favorite online resource so this one I was like kind of unsure about again because I'm not a teacher yet so I haven't had to use a ton of online resources um I really like the website Go Noodle. It has a really a lot of fun like videos and interactive things for kids. I think it is a little bit more based towards younger kids, at least in my opinion. Um, and I really like YouTube, which sounds super super weird, but I love YouTube as an online resource for teachers and especially like <laughs> as a wanting to be teacher, as a future teacher, aspiring educator. I like watching other educators. So I think I started out by watching um, Early Adventures and her channel is so much fun. Her setting up her classroom series is absolutely amazing, which it just started. Um, her classrooms are just such like goals. Um, uh, and her name's Shelly, by the way. Um, and then I also watched, um, I think it's Miss Call's Camper. Her name is Kayleen, Kayleen, I can't remember how to pronounce it. Um, and then I've just, <laughs> found a bunch of other ones and um I was trying to find videos about student teaching and I found a few channels but not a ton so then I thought well you know what why can't I be that resource to somebody else so that's why I wanted to create a YouTube channel um also I like the website Teachers Pay Teachers which I found from other YouTubers like that's how I heard of it originally um the only thing is that I haven't wanted to spend my own money on anything yet since I'm not even in a classroom, so maybe I will as a student teacher, but they do have a lot of amazing free resources as well, or just like, you can get inspiration and ideas. So, anyways, next question. Number nine, describe your perfect classroom. So again, I feel like I'm saying this with every question. Um, I'm not a teacher yet, so I can't really say for sure, but I think my ideal is having desks instead of tables. Because tables limit you um, 
and so I think I'd rather have desks and then you can put them in rows you can put them in like a table shape you can put them in um, groups you can really just move them around how you want your classroom to be or um, however you feel I think having technology in the classroom is great so having like a smart board or um, something along those lines is a really good addition um, Having flexible seating is really great, having a good classroom, library, I think is pretty essential, especially in the elementary levels, having, have that. Um, something that's really amazing at the school that I'm student teaching at um, is that all of the classrooms, except for the one that I'm going to be in, which is a little annoying, I'll give you that story in a second, um, but all of them have uh, offices for the teachers. So I don't think that that's pretty common, but the classroom that my teacher, my mentor teacher is moving into, they actually took the office away um, because they gave it to the principal. Um, the main office is like right here and then next door is the classroom. And so the um, principal had a really tiny office in, in there. And so they like took away the office to give a nurse's office and a principal's office in the main office. So unfortunately, <laughs> My teacher doesn't have that, but I think that that's pretty cool in classrooms. Having a kidney bean table, it's really great if you can have a water fountain and even a sink. Um, having a lot of counter space. Uh, yeah, I think that that's, I mean, I can't really say much more, I don't think, anyways. Um, what's your favorite part about teaching? So, my favorite part about teaching or being in an educational setting is just the interactions and um, relationships I guess that you would say the the partnerships and the relationships that you make with other teachers other staff members the students like I think it's such an amazing thing and when you have that relationship with a student and they can come to you and talk to you about things and they feel comfortable around you and when you're gone and they notice that you're gone like you're they're they're playing a role in your heart but you're also playing a role in theirs I think that's kind of cheesy to say but um I honestly think that that's the best part about it um but I don't know maybe I might say something different after I've taught um I don't know that I've seen the like aha moment I guess you would say in a kid so maybe that's the best part about teaching but for now I would say like the the relationships that are built What's your least favorite part about teaching? I wouldn't say that the day is very long, but I think it could be exhausting. Um, and I I worked for an after school program, so I always saw kids at the end of their day and they were always so exhausted. Um, but I think, yeah, like just the days being long, I guess. Um, and I think I don't like my least favorite part would maybe be like having a set curriculum where you don't have a lot of creativity, which I haven't had a ton of experience with that, but we did have some curriculum. We had a top for after school program. So we did have some set things and it was really hard trying to force things down the kids' throats when they weren't interested. Um, mine was a little bit different because we were teaching them about comic books and they just didn't care. Um, whereas like it's different with like math and science and such in the classroom, but I think that that's probably my least favorite. And then this is the last question. What advice would you give a beginning teacher or someone who wants to become a teacher? So obviously I am not, I am a beginning teacher. So I'm gonna say for one, if you're a teacher or an educator or a student teacher or anybody that has anything, any knowledge on this topic, please give me some comments down below, leave some advice or go to my Instagram at bargain underscore bug and leave me some advice would be um, much appreciated. But I think, so I would say the advice that I would give to somebody who wants to be a student teacher, who wants to be a teacher, um, for one I would say, which sounds kind of weird, but go to a four year university because you have much more exposure I feel like. I mean, that's what I did. I went to a four year university. I didn't go to a two year and then a four year. Um, I had more exposure to children, like in classrooms. Um, so that was really nice and it kept me on track. So I would probably say that. Um, and really just pay attention in your education classes. So start building an online resource for you. If you would rather, like if you'd rather it be on paper, 
um, and print it out and have all the papers and the binders and such, you can do that as well. But start building a digital resource for yourself from all your education classes. So from articles and from your homeworks that you do and the, th the things that they say, like a lot of the times in the education classes, at least that I have been in, they were teachers and then the, now they're in college trying to teach future educators. So they know what it's been through. So keep a digital resource and also build relationships with your professors. So, go, so you can go back and go talk to them. Um, I had a professor for a um, children's lit class and I built a relationship with her and then she ended up becoming my advisor. And then now I actually don't have her as an advisor since I'm, you get a different advisor in the education program, but I still know that I can go back to her and talk to her. And I've had hour long conversations in her office about things. I, I even came to her and talked to her about my worries before, um, about student teaching. And so build that relationship with your teachers. So, well, that was the teacher tag student teacher edition um thank you so much for watching and uh if you have any videos that you'd like me to film student teacher wise leave them down below in the comments um or you can chat with me at my instagram again that's bargain underscore bug or i'll leave that in the description below thank you so much for watching bye